Here is my lecture on a digestive system part two, and let's discuss uh, the nutrients uh, briefly related to what will keep you healthy and uh, keep your BMI in a healthy range, as we just discussed in part one. So understanding um, nutrition and um, what we want to understand is what we ingest and how those nutrients affect us and our health. So when we consider something a nutrient, um, it's something that is needed, needed to perform a physiological function. All right, so it's not just something we want, but it's something we need. And it's gonna help us with those uh, physiological functions that keep us running smoothly. So your main nutrients, um, these four, uh, excuse me, three, carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids are typical in what people think of um, having in their nutrients uh, and what you ingest. But remember, minerals and vitamins, while you don't have to have a lot of it, you do have to have them in your diet. So let's define some of these things. First of all, carbohydrates. So carbs, a lot of times, is what people will call carbohydrates. And here are some examples, some really varied visuals of what carbohydrates can be. Some are called complex, some are simple. Um, and of course, you'll recognize what is sugar that you find in real Coke right here. Sugar is actually called sucrose. Then you've got complicated carbohydrates that we have in plants and really are making up the plant cell wall. <clears throat> we call that cellulose and it helps us with our fiber in our diet. There are even carbohydrates that are making up um, the exoskeleton of uh, insects. So that's what you're seeing there. And I suppose you could eat them as well. And although I never have purposely, and <laughs> finally, carbohydrates that we consider complex carbohydrates or grains in many of our uh, common foods that we eat. Let's briefly consider functions of these carbohydrates. And um, carbohydrates, you want to think of an important energy source it is not one that we store. We don't store a lot of carbohydrates, but whether we call them sugars or polysaccharides, the more complex carbohydrates, um, we have to digest them into small molecules or these small sugars that are an important energy source. If we have grains, <clears throat> some of those grains are considered refined, um, but we don't wanna have a lot of those because when they're white bread, um, white flour that's put into um, our baked goods, um, that doesn't have a lot of the nutrients that are associated with whole grains, but they're all part of carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates as a general description, we wanna think of complex carbohydrates um, really being more than just energy, but having valuable vitamins and minerals. And especially when you're eating whole grains and beans, um, you're going to have a lot of those packed in those other nutrients besides the carbohydrate molecule itself. So you talked about or learned about that in, in chapter two. Um, <clears throat> so just a reminder that carbohydrates can be harmful, but they are need to be part of your diet, right? So we all know that you want to avoid you know, refined sugars. That means, you know, the, the table sugar that's put into the, the food and baked um, or the um, high fructose kind of foods you want to avoid. All right. And you can end up developing uh, type 2 diabetes um, when you have these high levels of carbohydrates circulating and you simply can't metabolize them um, because your insulin, the hormone insulin, becomes resistant to importing, uh, really being recognized and, and importing the, the carbohydrate the way you need to. So sugar circ circulate, circulates. Next, let's consider proteins. And here are a couple of pictures of varieties of proteins. This is not um, you know, all inclusive for sure. You're not seeing the grains that will also have protein with them and several other types of things. But your large categories of beans, which we know are not complete proteins, but almost, and then you've got a variety of of delicious looking proteins over here and some are healthier than others. 
The uh, proteins, as you know, are made of amino acids. We've already learned that in chapter two. Um, what you need to understand is that there are some amino acids that we have to obtain in our diet. So if we call them essential amino acids, these are amino acids, not that you need to memorize which ones they are, but you have to have them in your diet. So they are essential for your diet because we cannot um, fabricate them using other uh, molecules that we've ingested. A complete protein that you ingest as part of your diet will have all of the essential amino acids. All right, so um, meat and dairy is a good source for, for these complete proteins. Um, we do have non-animal sources, so plant-based proteins. Uh, you may or may not like tofu and um, soy milk. Of course, tofu and, and, and soy milk are the same base, the soy, and then, um, of course, soybeans. So those are non-animal sources for protein. And of course, we have a lot of um, beans themselves. So incomplete proteins um, are the ones that lack at least one essential amino acid. So in other words, it just doesn't have all of the, the uh, essentially amino acids. So if it, if it misses at least one, then we'd call it an incomplete protein. And um, we don't store a lot of amino acids. We actually, um, you know, we do have a lot of protein in our body in that we have muscles and bones and collagen, but we don't really store the amino acids, these 20 amino acids individually, like we talked about in chapter uh, two of this course. It's pretty simple to make a complete protein meal. So a couple examples I pulled up um, to be sure that you're, you're getting complete proteins. So combine incomplete proteins, since there are, there are very few that are actually have all eight um, amino acids. So when you take whole grains, grains with beans, all right, so really a standard meal for really any culture, beans and rice, hummus and pita, um, bean-based chili and crackers, refried beans and tortillas, all these things sound delicious. <laughs> beans with nuts, uh, or then adding nuts, of course, to your salad. Those are all good ways to um, make sure that you're getting a complete protein in your meal. I think most of us know that overeating anything is harmful, but in particular, if you overeat protein, as uh, sometimes people who are working out and building muscle for uh, an event or an athletic um, uh, habits or practice, so you're trying to build protein to, to become stronger, build muscle. Well, <clears throat> eating too much protein can be harmful. So for instance, can lead to dehydration while you're exercising, of excessive sweating, um, <clears throat> you end up getting rid of a lot of calcium along with the getting rid of the protein metabolite. Um, and so as that calcium is in your system, um, leads to kidney stones. Um, but more importantly, and probably what you might be familiar with is that if we, if a lot of our protein source is red meat, that can lead to cardiovascular disease. All right. So red meat oftentimes has, uh, high amount of saturated fat. And of course, saturated fats are the ones that can get, um, really increase the clogging of our vessels. Next, let's, let's look, look at lipids. So a couple different pictures of lipids. These are actually um, lipocytes or adipocytes. Um, they are in your, uh, you know, all over your body. We know we use fat for insulation and for protection and for energy storage. So lipids pack a lot of energy. So these are fat cells, lip, uh, adipocytes. And then of course we have other lipids that are plant-based and you get them in oils like we see over here. So when we consider lipids, um, again, fats and oils, as I was talking about there, and then cholesterol is an additional a four ring structure of a lipid. We don't have to rehash that from chapter two, but understand that they are important to have in your diet. So if we, they're considered saturated fats, 
Um, remember, those are the ones that are usually from an animal. And when they cool down, they're solid, like bacon grease that becomes solid. Um, and if they are unsaturated fats, they are usually from a plant origin. And then when they cool down, they don't become a solid, they stay liquid. So that's what you're seeing in this picture here. Of course, these are plant-based oils and in a bottle at room temperature, they don't have, um, you know, they are liquid as opposed to this one, butter, which is animal-based, not plant-based, and that's gonna be solid at room temperature. So next, um, there are like essential proteins, there are essential fatty acids that have to be part of your diet. Uh, you don't have to memorize those, but just know they exist as we consider having a balanced, healthy uh, diet. <clears throat> Olive and canola oil are um, good in that they will have less saturated fat. So that's called monounsaturated fats. And so those are strong and healthy for you, especially good fat is omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. So if you see those, you're going to think that's something positive for helping ward off um, heart disease. All right. And then um, I'm trying to think, I don't think I see it here. I'm not sure if it's in our outline. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the, um, or write down here, the type of uh, fat known as a trans fat. Trans fats are going to be the fats that are um, not healthy for you. And they are in fact, added to your uh, foods that are um, packaged foods, generally trans fats are, are, think of them as the opposite of omega-3 fatty acids. And these are gonna decrease, um, excuse me, they're gonna increase your risk for heart disease. So instead of warding off heart disease like omega-3 fatty acids, trans fats will increase um, cardiovascular disease. All right, so uh, they are there in your foods often to make the food more smooth. Uh, oftentimes it makes it taste good and last longer, but this is something that's fabricated um, to, for that purpose and is not good for your body. I just wanna make a quick mention of minerals. Um, so besides carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, um, the actual macromolecules that we use for fuel, minerals are available or need to be available um, so that we can um, really process a lot of our physiological events. So let's look at a couple of those um, major minerals like calcium that are there to help with nerve and muscle activity. Many different uh, second messenger systems in your cells will have to utilize calcium for those processes. So uh, as an example, you need to have calcium. Um, there are other minor minerals. In this case, I'm gonna list here uh, iron. Minor doesn't mean it is um, less important. So when you look up here, a greater than five grams of each min major mineral and um, <coughs> trace minerals, less than five grams of trace minerals, um, it just means the amount that's required. So iron is obviously required, even though we're calling this a minor mineral, Fe is iron, and we know that helps us carry oxygen. Then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if you have a real balanced diet, you're gonna have many different minerals um, and they're all important. I'm gonna name one more here, iodine. So iodine is one of those minerals that is required for uh, thyroid function. So iodine, we're going to use as we produce a thyroid hormone known as thyroxin. So that's why one of the reasons they've iodized salt so that you get iodine in your diet and um, a really essential mineral for um, metabolism. A couple of highlights here in terms of some specifics about calcium, calcium essential um, for, as I mentioned, nerve and muscle uh, activity. And of course, we, we store calcium in our bones. So but calcium is when it becomes a, a, a salt, calcium phosphates harden the bone. And so it's important to, to make the bone hard um, in terms of 
calcium needs. They do change a little bit through life, but we always need calcium. And then <clears throat> in terms of uh, helping prevent bone loss, we know we're going to have uh, vitamin D, which is a different nutrient that we're, we're going to talk about vitamins in a few minutes, but um, is needed with calcium to help us um, have strong bones throughout life. Next one, sodium. Sodium, um, of course, we think of um, having salt in our diet. We don't want too much salt. We hear that a lot, but it is necessary to regulate your water balance. There's gonna be a balance between the dissolved minerals, uh, dissolved particles and the water. So it helps regulate water balance. Um, not necessary that you memorize how much, but there is a recommended amount. So if you tend to eat a lot of packaged foods or if you tend to salt your food a lot, you may have too much sodium in your diet. Too much sodium can cause high blood pressure. Hypertension, remember, is high blood pressure. So um, it helps, it causes you to retain fluid and with that increases your blood pressure. Another uh, nutrient that is not a macromolecule used for energy, but nutrient necessary for normal physiological events. Those are your vitamins. And um, think of them as organic compounds. It's not a salt. It's not uh, a mineral, iron or calcium or uh, iodine, but these are larger organic compounds. They are not in the protein, fat or carbohydrate category, they tend to be large and they're important for metabolism. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what they're doing, they really help your enzymes. So they call them coenzymes. Uh, co and again, um, without them, your metabolism um, falters. So um, not important that you can identify uh, the roles for many of these vitamins, but do know that they come in both fat soluble and water soluble um, forms. So some of the vitamins will easily go through your cells. They're called fat sol soluble and others water soluble will need carriers. Um, so as we look at um, a reminder of how we absorb materials, remember something that is fat soluble, like the lipids that we're showing over here, the fat, flat, fat globules, um, really can transfer right across your um, membranes easily. If it's water soluble, um, they're going to be processed in the liver here and stored and um, really help with your metabolism quite a bit there. Your water soluble vitamins need help getting into cells. So as an easy way to memorize fat soluble and water soluble, um, you're going to think of um, vitamins A, and E, A and E, which are vowels, right? A and E, those are fat soluble vitamins, those two, fat soluble. That means that you can actually overdose, you can have too much of this, um, especially if you're taking um, supplements and, and your water soluble vitamins are gonna be the others. So you've got A, B, C, D. So B, C and D, are water soluble vitamins. And uh, that's one way to put those into the proper categories. And quickly to make mention that oftentimes uh, vitamins are acting as something we call antioxidants, antioxidants. Um, they are going to help in a process um, that we call um, oxidation in, in terms of decreasing that event in our cells, not important that you can point out what that biochemical reaction is, but understand that these vitamins are considered antioxidants and antioxidants are associated with decreased risk of cancer as an example. Um, so just understand that because we're trying to, um, the, the free radicals that are formed through oxidation can damage cells. So if these vitamins can fight against free radicals, then we're less likely to see damage to ourselves. And then of course, less likely to end up with cancer, uh, cancerous cells. And where do we find our vitamins? Plants.
right? Lots of vitamins and plants, fruits and vegetables. And finally, just to recognize uh, some of the major eating disorders, we know one, one thing about our diet or understanding nutrition is to make sure it's a balanced diet, um, which is you know difficult sometimes. So you really have to be intentional. Uh, other things have to do with a disorder that is um, a psychological disorder that ends up affecting our nutrition. So anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, three of the main ones that we want you to remember, and muscle dysmorphia, all of these having to do with a um, psychological understanding of your body, your body type, and then reacting to that in a way that affects what you eat. So they are eating disorders. So outlined here, anorexia, again, psychological disorder. Um, there's a fear of getting fat. So usually there's some self-induced starvation and lots and lots of physical activity and purging. As opposed to bulimia, where there is a large amount of food that is eaten, but then it's a um, first the binge eating, but then the purging afterwards. And of course, that's very dangerous to your tract um, as you lose that acidic material through your stomach, through the esophagus, and um, and oftentimes more than one time at one time a day, this would occur. Uh, binge eating disorder. There's the binge eating that you see with bulimia without purging. And of course that leads to other kinds of um, emotional distress because of that. And then that one where you, you saw in the picture earlier here, muscle dysmorphia. So morph is shape. And this is to have um, a poor understanding of muscle shape. So when, when people think their bodies are underdeveloped and they're preoccupied with uh, bodybuilding or something where it is extreme, that would be considered a, a disorder known as muscle dysmorphia. So that's the end of chapter nine.